We're here today to talk to the Miller Welder. How you doing, Miller? Oh, I'm pretty good, I guess. No, you're not. Your wire feeder is spinning erratically. And I'll show you why. Okay, I, I, I don't look inside. Shut up, we're looking inside. All right, boys. So what we got here is the old Miller Matic 175. That's a piece of crap. And the problem is, I mean, it's a great welder and all, Miller. Here's the problem. Basically, let me left hand this a little bit. Get out of my way, Sasquatch. Who in the world set this? Here, you close this up. Get out of the way. <laughs> it pinches down on the wire. It works, but this struggles like a bugger. It goes, rrr, rrr. Here's the deal. Look at the space between it. It's ridiculous. Watch me push this thing up. Look at that. Look at that ridiculous movement in there. Now when that piece up there pushes down, this baby, when she pushes down, it pushes this thing down as far as it can go where I showed you. There's a gap. There's a huge gap. Watch me push it up again. Watch me push it up. Look at that. It needs support over here. Why wouldn't they have given it support or made it strong enough? Oh, that's right. Designed to fail. So we're going to fix this crap. And I'll show you how. You're a scumbag! But it's not your fault. Don't worry about it, Milo. I'll fix ya! Ooh, it's all shiny. All right, we got a piece, a piece of crap. So we're gonna put these little bearings on here and it's gonna cradle that thing. <laughs> Just like that. All right, so we drilled the holes and uh, these bearing things, they're gonna plop in there like so. Then uh, this here is uh, where that drive wheel is gonna ride on. Let's go stick it in there and see what it looks like. Okay, so first things first, I have to be able to get it in here. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to go on the back side. Put them on the back side now. Then I gotta prop it up with uh, something plastic or something because we don't want the whole machine to be live. We'll bolt this up and then we'll prop it up with some plastic, shim it to whatever spec we need to get that sucker to go that little bit up. And yeah, we'll go from there. Spins nice. All right, color good. That's all for you, Miller. That's all for you. Pack ahead. Looks like we need about a nine inch piece of something. This thing looks like crap. It's only eight and a half inches, but that'll do. Okay now, now we're gonna mount that sucker onto here. How? I wish I knew. We'll have to figure that crap out on the fly. I think we'll go right to the end. And we'll weld a nut over here, and then a bolt. Then the bolt will drive against the bottom of the of the housing and push those wheels up against this uh, drive wheel. And I have a little bit of adjustability. Let's weld a nut on there. Yeah! Square nuts. So what I usually do is I put a crusty old bolt through there so that when I weld it, it doesn't uh, wreck the threads. And if it does, this might clean it up. All right, Miller, you're up! If you listen closely, you can listen, you can hear Miller whining. your door manure grinding time with my trusty old visor that's well, a freaking crusty crap now we gotta attach the flapper onto the flapper without any metal contact thing how the flippity flapper are we gonna do that I have no idea I guess I gotta go find a piece <laughs> Can't find anything. Alright. What do we got here? We got a lot of stuff. Hockey sticks, 
An old heater core, room handles, lanterns, some old bike tires, some old lights. Oh, let's see, rods and tubes. Hmm, make a wire. And more bits and pieces. Huh? Oh, what's that? Let's see. Hey! That's just what we were looking for. Hot damn! Let's go! <laughs> we got her. Finally! After all this searching. I've been out here for days. Made a little camp out yonder. Finally, we can go home. Oh, I hope the forklift will start. I've been out here for days. No problem. Cargo. Precious cargo has arrived. It is a lot of crap. Hey, Miller. Why do you gotta be such a dirty rat? Well, it wasn't me, guys. I, I didn't do it. I didn't tell anybody. I'm not talking about that, Miller. I'm talking about your innards. Your innards are all messed up. Hey, what are you talking about? My health about. That's private confidential information. I don't give a crap, Miller. Look at your dials. They look like crap. Look at your switches. You got dust everywhere. You look like crap. And the inside is worse! Look at your innards! They're all dusty! Well, well I can't, can't clean it out myself. You could try! Oh, okay, okay, I will. <laughs> How embarrassing. Looking at my innards, you're not even a, a doctor. Shut up, Miller! Just shut up! And don't forget that you, your lid won't even close! You piece of junk! Stop making fun of me! Your freaking handles come off and everything! It's, it's a disgrace! Your wire hanging tubes are all messed up, they're bent and scratched! Oh, that, that's an aftermarket piece, that's not me! Your toolbox, it's full of junk and crap! It's despicable! You can't even park straight in your spot. Uh, usually somebody pushes me over here. Uh, it wasn't me. You're lucky you have a spot. All right, Miller, calm down. Remember when you first came here and you had all those leaking problems with your, with your gas, your argons everywhere, you weren't welding properly and we had to send you in? That was nothing compared to this fiasco, you know? Now you're embarrassing your mom. And your clamp, it's covered in what I can only refer to as personal boogers. Your gas gauge has zip ties around it. What is the deal? Oh, those aren't me. I, I didn't do uh, My mom did that. My point exactly. All right. Need to put some kind of groovy notches in there. It's just a slice with the cutoff blade. Alright, now she's full of uh, like a grid of slices. Gonna help the epoxy have more surface to grab. Same thing for this piece. Alright, it's like nothing too fancy, but... Alright, one more thing. We gotta do two little holes here to bolt this end down. Yeah, yeah, I should probably punch it and stuff, but I'll just try to keep it on the line. That bit ain't cutting worth the crap. Sharpened her up a bit. Boom. This is our piece that we went and found. We gotta cut this sucker up a bit. Uh, it's gonna be our divider so that we don't get uh, voltage running right through our machine's chassis. Like classy Freddy Blassie. Boom! Now to get the epoxy to stick to this piece of fiberglass, we'll rough it up a bit. Same thing the other side. There, good enough. Here's the stuff at here all. Oh, crap. And we need a knife. Why a knife? Because we're not going to waste a K. Put her in the vise. All right. Clear epoxy. You get the stuff at your buck of grandma. This is good crap. Load this baby up. Which way was this supposed to go? Look over here. 
Wait for that to dry. Here she is, boys. And she's all solidified, nice and solid, without touching any metal together. That way we won't get a shock. What the shock are you talking about? All right, Slim, what we got here is the piece. It's gotta go in the welder here. Something like that, and this part's gonna get lifted up with this bolt right here. Now I gotta first drive in some screws here, which is just gonna fasten it to the metal frame, and then we can pry this upward. But the spool's in the way, so we gotta get that sucker out of there without unspooling the wire. All right, so we're gonna try and do, take it off, kind of unroll it, and set it on the chair. All right, give me a second. All right, dudes, kind of ready here. So I'm gonna cinch this bolt up a bit so that it touches this here uh, drive wheel. Watch that drive wheel go up. That's how far up we need to go. And then our wire is being touched while the wire is level. So let's cinch her up some. All right, going to be good with that. Looks squarish. Okay, we'll get the screws. All right, let's try driving a screw. <laughs> That was easy. Okay, I'm gonna try running it. Fire up. Pull the trigger. Sounds pretty consistent to me. Let's go high speed. Seems pretty uh, consistent. Hopefully the gears aren't messed up in there. And this fixes the problem. Looks like both of those bearings are moving. That means we're touching evenly. Hopefully we're good. Shut up! Okay, let's put the spool back in. Oh, and we're gonna... Let me zoom you in here now. Now, oh that is, that is really tight on there. This dial wheel has numbers in it. I've always had it to the max because this has always been a problem. So maybe now I can use these reference numbers as pressure. Maybe now that this thing is riding straight, I don't have to have so much pressure to maintain grab because it's not dipping the wire between here and here. This could be amazing actually. Cause I've never actually used this except for on the Max. I mean, when it was brand new, yeah, it was like, don't put too much pressure. Now I'm thinking, yeah, let's try it really loose and see what gives. So I'm usually able to weld almost anything, even rusty, crusty, painted crap. Let's give it a try. Yeah, we're still having that problem. That weld looked like crap. That was relatively consistent. Maybe the tension was the only problem. Not perfect, but it looks a lot better. Actually felt pretty good. Sounded pretty good. I'm impressed. I haven't had the welder feel like that in a while. Look at that. That's not too worse. That's actually a respectable half-ass professional weld. We might have done something. Feel even less power. Oh my goodness, I never weld like that. That's stupid. I don't know what you would weld like that. Well, let's try it on the paint. Hmm, it's like a ball. <laughs> That's a weird weld. Not straight, but relatively consistent. I'd say it's working. We gotta weld all this crap together today. I don't want it to be hiccuping all the time. All fixed up. Now that you're all fixed up, <laughs> we're buds again, right? Oh yeah, I guess we are. Good old Miller. And we're friends, right? Sure. Miller. Miller.